Happy Wednesday, Wisdom. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk to you about desiring the Word of God. Remember, it's not by might or power, but it is by the Spirit of the living God that we can have the hunger and the thirst and the passion. The Bible says every morning, you know, the Israelites would go and they would stoke the fire. They would put a log on the fire to keep it burning. They would keep their lamps on. And the Holy Spirit helps us to keep that fire burning, helps us to keep that lamp burning. Remember, there were 10 virgins, five that were filled with the oil, that had the oil in their lamp, and five who did not. The oil represents the Spirit of God. It cannot be purchased. You know, it's like the sorcerer Simon, when he tried to purchase the power that he saw the disciples, Peter walking in and he said, no, how could I do such a thing? Repent, right? These things cannot be purchased. They're priceless. They are a gift from the most high God. And as we walk with him and as we submit and obey his word, the Lord equips us for our calling. He equips us with power and might by his spirit. And so I want to talk to you about Psalms 19 verse 11. It says, moreover, by them is thy servant warned and in keeping of them, there is great reward. You know, the Bible teaches us, God says that he rewards the diligent. He doesn't reward the lukewarm. He doesn't reward, it doesn't say that he rewards people that have heartedly go after him. But the Bible specifically says that he rewards the diligent. And in this scripture, he says, I give rewards for obeying my commandments. There is life in my word. But when we choose not to follow Yah's commandments, when we choose to walk into disobedience and walk as the world walks, we have learned through this channel in so many ways, there are consequences for doing that. So by his word, we are warned so we don't have to make the same mistakes our forefathers made. We don't have to make the same mistakes our parents or anybody makes. We can walk forward in the knowledge of Christ and his understanding. And that is my prayer for you all daily, that the eyes of your heart would be open your understanding that you would grow in the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of the holy one jesus christ and as you walk with him you're growing from glory to glory that is my prayer for you child of god and i pray that you receive it verse 12 who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. See, we're not perfect. There are things that we do, we don't even realize that we do. So this is an important prayer that we ask God to cleanse us even from our secret faults. It's easy to pick out what's wrong with somebody else. It's so easy to see another man sin. But can you look in the mirror and notice your own? You know, the Bible says the heart is incredibly deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Only the Spirit of God can reveal your heart. You know, in the last day, judgment day, it is our hearts that will testify either good things of us or bad. So God is the only one that can reveal our heart to us. So it's a prayer that we should all pray. Cleanse me from secret fault. Cleanse me from iniquity. Let it have no dominion over me. Let sin never master over me. Hallelujah. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. In that day of the Lord's coming, he's coming for a perfect and spotless bride. And the only way we're going to be perfect and the only way you're going to be spotless is in Christ. Remember, we put on the armor of God every day. And one of those pieces of armor that one must remember to put on is your righteousness. Because it's not in you, but it is in Christ. And so when the enemy tries to throw all kinds of accusations at you, child of God, and say, you didn't get this right. You're not doing this right. You say, oh, I might not. But by the blood of Jesus, he helps me to overcome. It is not by our works that we're saved. Works are just a product of walking with God. You can see the fruits that we bear. But we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we put on his righteousness and the Father sees perfection when we do that. Hallelujah. 
Let the sounds, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So even with our words, we want them to be acceptable. And it starts with our thoughts. It starts with our heart. That's why we have to ask the Lord to renew our hearts, creating us a clean spirit that we speak no guile. Who can stand in the presence of a holy God? One whose hands is clean. One who speaks no guile, no wickedness, no evil, no, no gossiping, no slandering, no evil thoughts of your neighbor. But instead you walk um, in a posture where you seek to bless others. You don't curse with your words, but you seek to uh, bring a blessing. So that is what I want to encourage you to do on this Wednesday wisdom is to walk in the power and the knowledge and the understanding of the Holy One, Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. And um, to bless others, to be constantly examining the thoughts of your heart because out of the heart, one speaks, right? So I pray that this blesses you. I'm putting together a video for you all, um, a, a his history video about the 12 tribes and how that relates to the community of the African-Americans and so many more Latinos. And we're going to explore the haplo groups and the blood types and all of those things. So interesting to just see how all of these things are connecting to modern day society and where we are in this season. You know, uh, the Bible tells us the sons of Issachar, right? They understood the times, they understood the seasons, and there's a time and a season for everything to be revealed. So you say, why are you speaking on this now? Because it is time for me to speak on these things to edify not only a certain group of people, but this word that I am teaching you all, it's not about race, it's about truth. It is about opening our eyes and understanding to what is happening in this last hour so that we are not deceived. We are like Joseph. Joseph wore a coat of many colors. And that coat of many colors, I believe, represents every nation, every tribe. But we have to recognize truth and not leave our brother out. When we see an injustice, as people of God, we stand up and we say, ah, oh, no, 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 no. This is not right what is happening to my brother because we wear the coat of many colors. And that's a word to the Josephs, the peacemakers, the restorers. Remember, Joseph is just a picture of Christ. It's a foreshadowing of Christ. Christ is the only one that's going to bring healing and to our nation, healing to our land. But we have to recognize truth and we can't sweep we can't sweep over it. We can't just, you know, say, can we just go on about church as usual? No, it's time to recognize these truths as they are being exposed and at greater levels um, because we're in the last days, people. All right, you all have a blessed day. Remember that you are the head, not the tail, above only and never beneath. And I look forward to bringing that video to you all. Um, maybe it'll be finished today by Thursday, um, but definitely hopefully by Friday. All right, guys, I love you. Bye.